Okay, Mech Warrior, Mech Command here. We're going to be looking at getting good at battle tech fast. New players to the game. You've got your lance packs. You've got your hex maps. You're ready to go. The question is, where do we start with playing games? How do we get good with battle tech? And certainly, I've been pushing up a lot of videos to my channel here under the battle tech playlist. We've got the Wargaming 101, which is kind of an overview. I want to adapt uh, a recurring theme in those targeted at Battletech in one vlog to give you a starting point. That's that's the focus. And then, of course, as always, we'll turn it over to my fellow mech warriors, my fellow mech commanders in the comments. So in learning Battletech, and this is true of any wargaming system, in terms of Battletech, you got to get in there and play games. It's going to take you 15, 20 games to start to get a handle on not only tactics, but the type of stuff that you want to play. But within that journey, I think if we focus on some key points in Battletech, uh, let's say, it's not an exact number, let's say it takes you 20 games to get good at Battletech, to be able to put up a fight, to understand the tactics. If we can identify these action points early on, maybe we can cut that down to 15, or we can cut that down to 10. So within that framework. Now, these first couple of games, X number of games that you play with Battletech, I want you to win. We're going in, right? It's a war game. It's a little bit competitive, even if it's a narrative. But also this idea of you're a mech commander or you're a mech warrior, you can't lose. So within that perspective, though, don't be concerned, and easier said than done, don't be concerned the first couple of games, win or loss. Just, just be in that moment and be like, look, if it makes you feel better, this is a training exercise. It's like one of the old Mech Warrior battle pods, right? That, that's what we're looking at. So the first thing to understand is initiative. Initiative is key in Battletech. Um, when we talk about the rules in Battletech, you don't have to have them memorized. You just need to understand the flow and where you have to look stuff up if it happens. So this way you're not taken by surprise, all the modifiers, all the tables, all the charts, they're there to look up. Eventually, you'll become proficient with them. You'll probably get them memorized. But the first thing within the rules to understand is initiative. We roll for initiative. And there might be certain modifiers. But then what happens is we take turns moving individual mechs or individual pieces or depending on how many are left or the different groups, moving them in groups. This is important because... You need to, depending on whether you win or lose initiative, look not just in the moment of, of one piece that you're moving, but spend a few seconds, spend a few moments looking and anticipating where your opponent might move and trying to counter that ahead of time, if you can, with your moves, or trying to say, my opponent is going to move here. There's nothing I can do to stop. I don't want to be out in the open. Can I move somewhere else? So looking at it from that perspective of initiative is not just about moving your stuff. One of the beginning mistakes is when it's my turn to move, I move a piece or I move my pieces without units, without trying to take into account the opposing pieces around there. I just kind of move where I want to go. I try to move into a good position to shoot rather than looking. Now, it's not 100% because I'm going to try to look at what my opponent's going to do, where they're going to move. I can get some ideas, but I'm never really going to fully know until they move. So understanding initiative. Now within that movement itself, being aware of the modifiers in Battletech. And this, this takes a little while to master, but that's why we're going to just be playing games, playing games, playing games. This idea that in the shooting phase, when we move to shooting... I'm going to be trying to keep my modifiers down, and my opponent is going to try and keep those modifiers up. So, and it's going to switch back and forth. So, looking and understanding what are the chances of my opponent hitting me? If it's good, how can I stock that modifier up? Meaning, walking, running, jumping. How many hexes can I move? If um, we're in a place where I want to get a lot of shots, right? My, my, Longbow is set up. It's in perfect place. I want to fire off all those long-range missile 20 packs. I want to keep that modifier down. So I might not even want to move. I don't want to walk. I don't want to run. I want to keep those modifiers down. 
Now, the range might be medium or long, and then, of course, my opponent's movement is going to affect it. But in this case of, of sitting there static firing, I can keep my numbers down by not moving. Um, likewise, let's say I'm playing a Warhammer, and I'm engaged, and there's some other mechs, and we're in range. They're going to be firing at me. I can walk, but if I run, I'll get a slightly higher modifier. So maybe I want to run to give me the defensive modifier of how many hexes moved. But that is then going to stack against me because now when I shoot, it's not going to be the standing still. It's not going to be walking. It's going to be the running. So understanding this interplay, and it's never going to be perfect. I'm never going to be able to strip down the number to nothing because my opponent is going to be moving. And there's times where... I might not want to move, but other mechs have appeared. You know, an example of my longbows in the back, and it's been firing off, and now some hovercraft appear because they've been working up the flank. I'm still going to be shooting every turn because that's the point of the longbow. A longbow is um, two LRM-20s and two LRM-5 packs. It's, it's a really good um, long-range missile mech, but in this case with those hovercraft there, I'm going to need to be moving. So the next piece is... As you fire, right, understanding in battle tech, there are some times you can call a shot. Um, there are some targeting computer, and there's some tech that you can utilize. But for the most part, in the core, in the basic rules, where you fire, you're going to hit on a random chart different parts of the mech. And, and what this represents, right, at first glance, it's like, wait, I'm shooting at you. Um, why did I hit you in the left leg? I wanted to hit you in the center torso or the right torso. Well, what that represents is the fact of the accuracy of weapons. Some weapons are more accurate than others, but these battle mechs are moving very fast, and they're moving behind cover. So when you occupy a hex, that's not necessarily you just standing there. You're moving through that hex. Maybe you're slightly behind cover. Maybe your opponent is moving. It represents the fact that there's these two machines dynamically moving. It's a little bit harder to hit than you think. I mean, if you just think about tanks and aircraft and other things with um, targeting systems, it's, it's easier said than done. It's hard to hit a moving target. So that's what that um, represents, where, where it's hitting on the chart. But what you want to try and do is as you hit your opponent, you want to be able to look at facing and torso twisting to try and hit a specific area. Um, this is an important skill as you move into heavies and assault mechs where you can just shoot head on and torrent them down, but it's better once you hit and an opening presents itself to take that. So here's what I, I mean by that. We've got two machines facing each other. We've been firing at each other. We're just sitting there firing at each other, and through the randomness of the dice... You happen to hit, let's say it's, um, you happen to hit my left torso a few times, and it's really weakened there, right? Or my left arm has taken a lot of damage, and it's, maybe it's my right arm. Right arm's taken a lot of damage. It's gone to internals, but I've still got some good bubbles left in there for the internal structure because I'm a heavier in assault. But I've got a PPC in that arm. I've got some weapons in that arm. It would be nice to drop that arm off and then start the damage transfer. Well, if you're facing me head on, then that means your spread is still potentially all over my entire mech. But if you face your firing arc, either through movement and walking or torso twisting, torso twisting is an important tactic because it allows you to move, be moving in one direction, but also change arcs. If you can get to my right side, that now means you roll on a different section on the chart where you hit, the odds are increased that you're going to hit my right arm. Little things like that in terms of positioning make a really, really big deal. And, and I push that out there as a tactic to start thinking about. And uh, some might disagree and say, Fritz, that's kind of like, you know, mid-level training, mid-level mech warrior training. Yes, it is a little bit harder to see that and to try and pull that off and make that happen, especially if you're playing a lance and a bunch of mechs. But I want to increase your win as quick as possible. I want that to be on your, your scope, be on your radar as fast as it can. Think of it as just something to play with on the way to mastery, something to understand. We talk about this in, in wargaming. Before you can do awesome tactics, you got to be able to see the awesome tactics. You've got to be able to set up the awesome tactics. You've got to be able to see your opponent make a mistake and then capitalize on that mistake. Before you can capitalize on that mistake, you have to see it. 
So half the battle in the beginning is trying to make this stuff happen, trying to align things, trying to pull out the tactica, and then see it, and then take that advantage. So I would push with that second. Now, between those two skills, understanding those, that's going to give you a, a core feeling, core fundamentals of the game. In terms of your first couple of games, right, think about this as a trainer, I would say play with a lance, right? That's another, I mean, that's a V-log in itself. Fritz, first couple of games, should I do one-on-one -on -one mech? Should I do two mechs? Should I do combined arms? Like, like, what should I do? I like to play a lance, as in maybe a heavy, two mediums, and a light, or an assault, two mediums, or a light, or, or something close to that if you've got the... Starter pack, Game of Armored Combat, if you've got um, a couple of, of the Lance packs, start with a Lance with a mix and, and try to play the different machines and try to understand the different aspects of them. If it's a little bit out of balance or somewhat out of balance, that's okay. We don't have to worry about battle value and tonnage or C-bills and all that type of stuff. This is just core learning the rules, core understanding the rules. I'm going to push it over to my fellow mech warriors now. My fellow mech commanders, new to the game, what are maybe two or three, two or three things, points, action items to look for, to look to cultivate, to look to understand that will put you on that path to win?